Imagine we have a data set with two features, where one feature has values that are vastly larger than the other. The difference can create inconsistency when we process the data. To fix this, we use a technique called normalization. There are multiple types of normalization, but in this video, we will focus on two of them. Let's start with mean max normalization. This one is extremely simple. We scale all the values so that they fall within a specific range, typically from 0 to 1. Each feature is scaled proportionally, so the relative difference between data points are preserved. The formula for mean max normalization looks like this. Here, xi is single data point for one feature, and mean x and max x are the minimum and maximum values of that feature in the dataset. Remember, each feature has its own minimum and maximum, so this scaling is done separately for every feature. This ensures that all features are transformed to the same range without mixing their scales. If you want to scale a feature to a custom range, say A to B, we can generalize the formula like this. This method of normalization is simple to understand and easy to implement. But it is not commonly used in neural networks. Now let's look at a more practical method called standardization, also called z-score normalization. This method is commonly used in neural networks. Suppose we have a dataset with features that have uneven scales. The first step in standardization is to center the data around mean. In other words, we shift the data so that the mean of each feature becomes zero, effectively moving the center of the data to the origin of the graph. At the same time, even every data point keeps its relative position with respect to the others. The formula for standardization is simple. First, we calculate the mean of the feature. Then, for each data point, we subtract the mean and assign the result as the new value for that data point. This step centers the data around mean. This step centers the data around zero. In practice, data science libraries like NumPy or Pandas use vectorization to efficiently perform these operations on entire data sets at once. The next thing to consider is that some features may have a much larger variance than others. If we leave it like this, the feature with large variance can dominate the learning process. To fix this, we scale the data so that each feature has a variance of 1. This ensures that all features contribute equally to the model, preventing any single feature from overpowering the other. The formula for making the variance 1 looks like this. First, we calculate the variance of each feature. Since we have already centered the data around mean, so the mean is 0, we can simplify the variance formula by removing the mean term. Next, we divide each data point by the standard deviation. And remember, the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. After this step, each feature has a variance of 1. And the data is both centered and scaled, making it ready for most machine learning algorithms, including neural networks. Now, one important question is, why do we actually do this? Let's understand this with an example. Imagine we are only using two parameters. W and B. On the left, we have the unnormalized data, and on the right, we have the normalized data set. On the left, you can see that the data is highly skewed and uneven, with features on very different scales. This asymmetry makes optimization algorithms like gradient descent unpredictable. The gradient can move very slowly along one direction and too quickly along another requiring many iterations to converge to the optimum. On the right, after normalization, the data becomes more symmetrical and balanced. This allows gradient descent or any other optimization algorithm to converge faster and more reliably because all features contribute more evenly to the updates. In short, normalizing makes optimization more efficient, stable, and predictable. 